Hello and welcome back to Darksiders 2. We are in the Banewood. Bane. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, if I just do a Bane impression, it's just going to be a Deckard Kane impression. Batman, watch out for Diablo. <laughs> but yes, we're here in the Banewood. We're trying to relight the Maker's Forge, I do believe. Last time we tried fighting a boss that was way too strong for us. And that did not go well, as the footage quite nicely shows. It is nice that we can sort of leave the beaten track though and explore and do all that sort of stuff. I do like doing that, so this playthrough could take a while. Let's so just chop this motherfucker up. Need more wrath. It's not wrath anymore, mate. It's almost Pandaria, Jesus. Well, drunk. In case you're one of the f very, very, very few people who never played WoW. So yes, we're back here, we are death. We are in this nice little forest that's apparently got corrupted dudes. I wonder if it's possible to grind in this game. It looks like it. You had a little bit of experience whenever you kill stuff. Good job there. There we go, we've got a health potion. Uh, what was the horse button again? There we go. So there's a... S see, Crowbro points us towards secondary objectives. For now, we're just going to go for the primary. We're too low level and under geared to really do much other than that. What are you up to, bro, bro? Uh, you just flying all over the place. But we shall proceed on to what I think is the Maker's Forge, or at least the fires to stoke the Maker's Forge, and that'll let us do stuff. Oh, there's a chest up here. I want it. I want my loot, damn it. Hold on a sec, guys. There we go. I think we got some new boots, some new nicer boots. Let's have a look at what we have. Got some new sides. We'll equip these because they're more damage. This model is really low res. That's not actually. That's default, not. You know. And some blue boots, more crit. Oh, exciting gear. We got more arcane and more resistance. And we have a Book of the Dead page. What's this? This is like a chest plate. <gasps> Death can actually wear some clothing! Oh my lord. In future, um, what I'll do is, as I collect gear, I'll just sort of equip it. If it's like a purple or something, then I'll show it off, but if it's just regular gear, I'll edit it out. So if you see any sort of little bumps in the video, that's just me equipping some new stuff. Oh, it's going all brown for a moment. <laughs> Almost level three. Come on, die. 
Level up. Power has increased. Skill point. Let's check out our new power. You've leveled up. Every skill grants stuff that lets you purchase new abilities. So let's purchase new ability. We can only we can either get more teleport slash, except it doesn't let me scroll. There we go. It just deals more damage and heals a bit. More? What's this? Immolation. Let's get that. And then that lets us get inescapable. And more immolation. It's really irritating that it doesn't do that. What's this Reaper Gorge thing? I don't know. Reaper Gage Gorge. However you want to say it. Ignore him. His chest. Ow. Let's try and set. I don't seem to be setting off. Oh, yeah, he was on fire. It's just an orange glow particle effect. A little bit sad that it's not a cooler effect, but. Oh well. Uh, if I had to guess, we have to go up here. And then jump. Like that. And then over the wall. It's a jumping puzzle. Like that. Up this. Up. Death. Thank you. Oops, I need to stop doing that. <gasps> Luckily we could land on the dwarf's head. I'm sure he won't mind. And again. <gasps> Those look like some shoulders. There we go. We have some abilities. Oh, need something more. So Crowbro is actually, you know, not um, called Crowbro, it's called Dust. And Dustied is Despair. How melodramatic. I wonder if that's anything. I wonder if we can do something with that later. <laughs> And the statue's making a noise. Wait, this. That's what's making the noise. Okay, I'm gonna get that quickly. Okay, so we can actually get that thing yet. I guess we need an item. I think it's to do with that sort of plinth on the wall. There's a thing on the wall. It looked like we could shoot it at some point or something. Lol. Owned. Um, but we're proceeding on towards this very dramatic looking plume of smoke that's also glowing. The charred bars. Oh, this thing in there. So we look a bit plain and boring. And a thing. We use those to pay Volgrim for a chance at random items. I think the best idea is to save those and get the epic or special items. Looks like he's leashing. He wants me to carry on that way. What's that? Yeah, so that looks like the same sort of stone that was there before. So that's the thing that um, we couldn't pick up. So I guess you can shoot them down or something later. Not enough wrath. Not enough wrath. Instead of killing these things all day, just give them an occasional bop. Up we go, and up we go, and up. 
Onto there. Up there. Up there. And down. This is sort of cool. I like stuff like this. Little puzzles and stuff that just get you that little bit of extra loot if you have the patience to do it. And look like another set of shoulders, but it didn't look like they had any fancy stats on. There's another blue thing. But we can't get still. These things are everywhere. I have to go alone. I'm sure it'll get explained at some point. Shoot the blue things and get bonus stuff. It's right on. Right on through the fire and the flames. We carry on. To a volcano. Looks like we're starting in Mordor. Now she said she wanted fire for the forge. There's a thing on the minimap. Help Khan defeat the Conterus. Sure thing, Khan. Okay, he's doing a better job than I am. That's not fair. Why is he better at this than I am? Word spreads fast. Not another one. You're the Nephilim, the one they call Death. How did you get here? Took a wrong turn. It appears I'm stranded here with the rest of you. If you seek the cauldron, you should know that it fell to corruption there long ago. I can still feel the fire itself rumbling deep in the earth. I'll take my chances. Your shaman has offered me a talisman if I bring her the materials. You'd be wise to accept then. Her craft is mighty powerful. Where do I find Stalker's bone? You'll find Stalker's prowling the cauldron. Should be simple work if your name is any indication. <laughs> no different than the others. Less pleasant on the eyes for one. <laughs> I could say no less for you. Folks around town call me Pup or Lad. But I prefer my own name. Carl. Pup it is then. As you will. Matters not to me. Why not restore the oh, fire death, yourself? you kidder. I came here just for that purpose. Figured I'd pop the cork, so to speak. Be the hero. But the cauldron is locked up well and tight. And the way through is swallowed by fire. You look capable enough. Perhaps you can find a way. I'll wait here and guard the entrance. Chill thing, dude. So, Darkside is... 2 has been out long enough for a few reviews to have surfaced. And a lot of them are saying sort of very similar things to Darksiders 1, to be honest. I mean, some people are harping on about the fact that it's a Zelda clone and that sort of thing. And as I said in the first video, but never really got a chance to explain. You know, I'm surprised that Zelda is the only Zelda game. It needs a little bit of competition, I think, as we just look at this very, very... It's actually fairly pretty for, you know, a brown wasteland. Yeah, more games need to sort of... See, competition to me is not a bad thing, and it's going to force, A, the Zelda genre to develop a little bit. You know, it, Dark Souls has its own spin with having a bit more engaging combat than regular Zelda games, although Wind Waker has very, very strong combat. The others, not so much, to be honest. Especially the Wii games, that's just flailing. So, that gate is barred. <laughs> I mean, I haven't played that much of this game, so I can't exactly definitively say anything about it. But I think this is going to be the first dungeon. And that looks like the cauldron itself. I guess we end up lifting that. I do remember the first dungeon in Darksiders 1 was a sort of like a ruined temple with a giant bat on the top of it. That was pretty cool. And then Darksiders 1 sort of has a really cool setting of the sort of post end of the world ruined civilization that's been taken over by demons as we just 
tear some people to shreds. What are you looking at there, Crowbro? Let's crack this chest open. But yeah, Zelda has been in isolation for too long, and more games like Zelda to me is not a bad thing. It's a bit of an untapped genre. I guess we get an item to crack those open. Those look like corruption shards, let's say. It's probably what they're going to be called. And we can't pull that because lava. There's a thing here. It can be used to destroy certain objects and slot jumps. Press Q to enter aim mode. A lit wall switch blast. Ah, cool. Okay, let me pick another one of these up. There we go, that's that puzzle solved. It's a fun gameplay style, and you can do a lot with it, and Zelda has infamously been stagnant for a long, long time. I want to try something. Ow. Come oh, no. oh no, we have to use middle mouse button, don't we? <laughs> So I don't mind Darksiders being a bit like Zelda. I really don't, because I love the game style. You know, I grew up with Zelda. It's one of the first games I played was the first one. I am that old. And it's... you know... I don't mind it. I think if the game is fun, then who gives a shit, you know? <laughs> That's the philosophy you have to take. Who, who cares if it borrows heavily from Zelda? If the game is fun, if it plays well, if it works, if it can tell a neat story, and if it can do... if it can have fun gameplay that's somewhat memorable, I don't give a shit. It can put you in a green cloak and everything if it wants. No one cares. It's only people looking to sort of rabble rouse or looking for a thing to, you know, to shout. There's a difference between being uninspired and and just blatantly copying stuff. And to be honest, this doesn't feel uninspired. It doesn't feel like it's a, uh, I don't know, by the numbers, quickly get it out. you know, make sales, steal Zelda's market. It feels like they wanted to make an interesting game. They wanted to have a unique visual style, because that was sort of the big thing with Darksiders 1, where they got in a big comic book writer, author, um, artist, and made death into this very <laughs> generally regarded as a little bit over-designed, because death looks, not death, war looks a bit, um, let's say, over the top. Death is a lot more restrained, which I think is nice. I quite like how he looks. I like the sort of the weird skull mask. Okay, so we need to get over there somehow. We can't jump that. Let's, ah, there we go. It's a way up here. Up. Ah, uh, okay. So we want to go up and then jump. And then, oh, there we go. <laughs> he doesn't move quite as smoothly as, as I said before, you know, Assassin's Creed or anything, or quite as fluidly as Prince of Persia, but it's good enough. It serves its purpose. And at least he's not slow. At least I'm not spending three weeks climbing up a bloody wall. Just drop. There you go. Can we just jump back? Uh, leave aim mode. Looks like it.
And on the upside, you know, at least we have Crowbro instead of having Bloody Navi or Fee. Oh, what was it? Fee. Jesus Christ, Fee. Made me want to kill myself. You just picked up an item. Here's a lengthy tutorial about using that item. Now let me explain to you at great length what the item does, and how to solve the puzzle in this room that features this item that you already picked out half an hour ago. Whoop. Whoop. I don't like the fact that they're so close to the lava. I don't want to fall off accidentally, that would be a bad thing. Ow. I really like that teleport slash. Okay, he doesn't seem to like the heavy weapons much. And there we go. I also gotta say, the music in this game is pretty good.